Good morning! It is Wednesday. I wanted to show you uh, the lip progress before I put any lip product on over them. So the top one's still definitely swollen, especially like right in the center is where I feel like it looks the most kind of silly. But, um... Oh, I think they're gonna be so perfect once the swelling goes down though. The injuries are like tough for me. I don't I don't love to see that. It spooks me out a little bit. I'm like, oh god. What happened? Oh wait, I was there. I paid for it. <sighs> Anyways, so just putting on some makeup. I'm gonna go have lunch with the girlfriend and hopefully her baby. Let's put some clothes on. This is uh, <laughs> all I could drum together today. This hat is dang cute though, huh? <laughs> Gabby our Galvor. All right, comfy cozy. Let's go have some lunch. Okay, back home. The lips are really popping. <laughs> I had myself a little fooled earlier that I might be able to conceal the injuries. That's not the case. Um, just working on some editing and also I am flipping, dragging. I'm cold and I'm dragging. <laughs> so... I just whipped myself up a smart cup. Gonna let that puppy cook. Drink that. And then I might have to work from the bath for a little bit because I am really cold. I don't know. I don't know what the move is. I mean, I'm like, I could go to bed. I'm tired. That's not gonna work. It's 3.11 p.m. Wakey, wakey. Lunch was so good. Uh, <clears throat> I just absolutely love her and her family and her little squish of a baby. The most perfect tiny human. It's so fun like being in this phase of life too because it's like she's been my friend since we were in high school and I know her family and like we're all so close and have so many years worth of history and it's just like so crazy to think about knowing people for that long and seeing all these special I don't know just getting to like be a part of all of these really fun extremely special phases of life I just feel very honored in it it's like my favorite thing in the whole world <sighs> and damn, my friends make some cute babies. It makes me very excited, too, to celebrate. You know, like, there's a lot of exciting things that have yet to come in my life that I can't wait to have these special people around me for. And, um, I don't know, we're just in that, like, chunk, like, it, that 10-year period where everybody starts having all these big life experiences. Lots of weddings, lots of babies, lots of like first time buying a house, big kid jobs, you know, the whole, uh, the whole gamut. Like it's all just, it's happening right now. And it's just very fun and I love to like pick my head up from time to time and soak up the fact that all of that's happening right now like we're witnessing it we're experiencing it and just reminding myself to like take it in and really pay attention and be intentional um because obviously there will be more fun things to come in other decades but this is just such a special unique time and I want to Soak up every second of it while it's here. <gasps> that would be if I could, you know, stay awake. <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna keep rocking and rolling here. I don't know how people 
like professional YouTubers have 45 minutes worth of content from a single day. I really am excited to like get better at this though and be able to kind of hone in on like what I like to share, what I'm gonna keep more private and just starting to like really kind of niche down, okay, what is this, what is my corner of the internet gonna look like? <clears throat> what do I consistently share? How do I share it? All of those things. But outside of that, of like the fun creative element of it is also just I love, one, the idea of building a community and, you know, having interactions with people who I maybe don't necessarily know, but you start to feel like you know each other. I mean, I have a handful of people that that's happened on Instagram with, um, where it's like, sometimes I even forget that I've never even met that person in real life, but through interacting with their content and watching their life, they feel like a genuine real life friend and I love that. I love that the internet has like created that opportunity. And so, you know, that's a unique element to sharing and being consistent and building that community, but also internally having this like electronic scrapbook that lives and breathes forever on the internet of my life. I've I've kind of reflected about that many times about some of my favorite influencers and I've just always been a YouTube person. I love YouTube. I love long format content. Um and some of my OG people that I've just been subscribed to since what feels like the dawn of time. It's like I literally watched those people grow up. Like they were mid 20s, maybe some of them even younger than that when they started and when I was watching them on the internet as a younger person than them. And I watched them, you know, with silly like fabric backdrops evolve into massively successful influencers professionally, but then also I, you know, they, most of them were like single through a lot of it and I've watched them go through, you know, like as I'm sure you have too, like we've all, I'm sure we all have our own version of watching that with someone, but they fall in love, they get married, we watch their kids be born and, and there's just something very cool about that. And like after losing my mom, it just, <laughs> right after I lost my mom, a therapist put it to me in a way that just like really stuck that like trauma and grief, she likes to frame it as seeing behind the curtain and that you really don't even know the curtain is there until you're seeing behind it basically. And it's like, once you've seen it, you can't unsee it. And it forever impacts the lens you view life through. And for me, that has been obviously, you know, a painful journey. But in so many ways, I appreciate people and life and experiences completely differently than I ever did before. And... I've even thought that watching some of my favorite people on the internet thinking like, God, it makes me kind of emotional <laughs> to like revisit this thought, but of like, oh my God, if something were to unexpectedly happen to you, like your family has hours and hours and hours of you in your element, just literally living your life. Cause so many of these people, you know, it's like, it's vlog style and it's very raw and it's very obviously censored. I know there's huge chunks of these people's lives that are not featured in this stuff that's on the internet, but pictures are one thing, like when you've lost somebody, but videos are Videos are totally different.
and even without like grief too I can't imagine posting consistently content for you know a decade or so and going back to stuff that you created 10 years ago and looking at like oh my god this is my life then and wow how special was that and I don't know just being able to appreciate like the evolution of your own life because it's been more thoroughly documented than ever before like we've never had anything like video content and the power of the internet it you know as far as the longevity of technology the internet is still so new and it's easy to forget that but like imagine if we could go back and watch our grandparents live their daily life we could see it in color and in action things that you know otherwise we just have to use our imagination and there's some there's magic to imagination um, and hearing things through storytelling but there's something also for the ability to see it and understand in a way that isn't possible without seeing it firsthand and I just think that I don't know the possibilities are endless and I just think it's very cool and that's a huge part of my motivation and like kind of the behind the scenes why and just like what motivates me to I don't know want to share and build community document our life be able to look back on it one day and hopefully have a lot of fun and make some flipping friends along the way so hmm sorry to like get a little uh greasy on you there <laughs> we just gotta like soak up our lives you know don't let any of it pass us by you don't know how much you get and even if you get a whole hell of a lot of it it's all just still so special and every moment that passes you won't ever have the same one again so mm -hmm. just a little YouTube philosophy for you on this fine Wednesday afternoon I think I digress <laughs> I'm gonna drink this Flippings markup and shut my pie hole but thanks for being here also my Sephora order when they did the second round of the sale came in I don't know oh, sometime recently and I can't remember I know I got the Orbe, I'm not really sure you say it, their texturizing spray, which I absolutely love. I was very excited to purchase that on sale and they don't sell it, at least in any of the stores here, so I had to order it online. Um, but then I can't remember what the other, I'm pretty sure I brought, bought one other thing and so I'm gonna open this puppy up because I don't remember what the second thing was. Okay. Texturizing spray. This stuff is so good. So good. If you haven't tried it for yourself, get the mini bottle and give it a go because, oh, it's good. Oh, that's right. And then the, the way um, scalp serum, which I'm almost out of. So this timing is perfect but you just put this in your hair after you get out of the shower massage it in and then style like normal so these were my last two purchases that I made I wish I would have gotten some brow products I intended to completely forgot that I'm running low so it's all right 
I was thinking maybe I'd run to Ulta because I don't think what I have left of self tan will get me through an entire tan. But I am so tired. I feel like deliriously tired. No, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go. No promises that I'm gonna get the tan applied, but I'm gonna get the Ulta thing out of the way because I have told myself like four days in a row I was gonna go and I still haven't gone. So, just gonna do it. I am permanently traumatized from this one time that I went. I pulled into the garage, walked up the couple of steps and into the house and as I was stepping over one of the steps, I noticed something move <laughs> and it was a snake. <laughs> Woo! The whole experience was massively traumatizing and very dramatic. Um, but now, without fail, every single time I come out of the house, I am taking an extra second to glance before I step foot out of the house. Uh, it was literally right up against the very first step on the garage floor, and ooh, I startled him when I stepped over it, and ooh, gives me chills just thinking back to it. I'm gonna go to the B&B that had trash, that today was its trash day, roll its bin back up, go to Ulta, and then prep the linens that I picked up on Monday for the dry cleaner to pick up tomorrow. So I'm actually glad I got out of the house because I think I would have forgotten about the dry cleaning. And that would have been a huge bummer because my car is completely full <laughs> of dry cleaning. <laughs> Okay, I just got to Ulta. Oh my God. These drivers out here. Uh-uh, mm -mm. nope. It is 610. I watched people coming out of their lanes, coming into red lights, hot. Watched somebody just now straight up run the red light. Was stopped, light was red. The light beyond the one we were stopped at turned green and they, they went, not paying attention. Nope, I'm gonna get what I need and I'm going straight back home. I do not need to be out in all of this. Neither do y'all, stay safe. What the Okay, it is late. It is 10.36, ran to Ulta. I went to one that is fairly close to us and they were out of the big bottles of the Loving Tan Platinum, so I almost bought it, but then I did the math about <laughs> how much it is per fluid ounce, and the bigger bottle is just such a better deal. So I looked online um, and saw that one, also on our side of the town, our side of town, had it in stock, so I ran to the other Ulta. Again, continued to see like fast and furious driving won't even get into it, but people were legit being crazy. <sighs> Got to that Ulta, they didn't have it. So I left with the smaller bottle, which, you know, it is what it is, but I prefer to use the platinum if it. I know I'm gonna have time to let it like fully cook. And for me, usually I like to sleep in a tan, but also I'm okay with putting it on if I know I don't have anywhere to be, putting it on during the day and just letting that that thing cook so and rinsing off like in the evening sometime i decided i don't think i'm gonna do it tonight i think i have to go to a lunch tomorrow but then after lunch i'll do the tan and probably wear it like into the evening tomorrow and then sleep in it rinse friday morning but i'll shower ahead of time so that i can blow dry my hair first put it in rollers put the tan on and then proceed yes that's what i'm gonna do Sorry, I'm very tired, <laughs> if you can't tell. Also, Mason's sleeping, which is why I'm trying to be a little bit quiet. He made breakfast bagels for dinner tonight, and they are, I mean, they're so good. Like, I've never had a breakfast sandwich at a restaurant 
that competes with his breakfast bagels. Um, and then we watched Winter House while we ate. We both <laughs> really enjoy Winter House. It's not my favorite, but um, I definitely, it's entertaining for sure. And then we watched the episode zero of season 11 of Vanderpump Rules. It's definitely for all the new viewers that this show has attracted because it was giving way too much backstory all the way back to season one of Vanderpump which was like a long, long, long time ago. So I think maybe they were trying to give some context to the situation for new viewers who aren't willing to go back and watch all 11 seasons. Which if you haven't seen Vanderpump Rules and you're thinking about watching it, Mason and I talk about it once a week, it feels like. We both absolutely love it. I was watching the OG seasons in the spring, that's when I first, like when all of this scandal all stuff started. Um, I have a girlfriend who loves Bravo and we were talking about BravoCon and then she was telling me, I've never really been a Bravo girly and she was like, okay, start with these shows, whatever. And I just went for Vanderpump Rules just because there was current drama, but I didn't look into the drama because I wanted to have all the context leading up to whatever has happened this past spring. So I was watching the early seasons and Mason would just, be around while I was watching him and then next thing I knew it was like he's on the couch for every episode and we would just binge it for weeks oh my god it's so good it's so good and the early seasons are like tough to get through but if you haven't seen it you have to start from episode one and I promise a season one's like the toughest to get through it's still entertaining it's just old at this point so if you can power through season one I felt like by two, I didn't mind as much. And by three, like we were off to the races. But the context is just, it makes a huge, huge difference. And like the character arcs are so much better. Obviously these are real people, but um, anyways. <laughs> um, oh, I also was just gonna show you, I impulsively picked up two other things at Ulta. Um, I just re-upped on the um, Essence mascara which I really like these, they're $5. You literally can't beat that. Um, normally I use the um, Lash Princess False Lash Effect. I know they have like a few versions, I don't know what the difference is, but like just the plain version of the False Lash Effect. But then tonight I also picked up the waterproof version of it because if I put mascara on my lower lashes, it transfers like clockwork, even though I like fully bake my under eye and it even makes me a little crepey but if i don't my is all over the place so i have to use a waterproof on my lower lashes also this uh juvia's place um blushed rougey this is the volume four color anyways it's a i think a two color palette but the reason i grabbed it is because i really have been wanting and kept grappling during the Sephora sale with buying the, you know the one, the Blush Duo one size. Is that who makes it? I'm pretty sure. But it's the Blush Duo that's, like almost every color is sold out. So when I've been in drugstores lately, um, I use a, Sorry, running back. I use a liquid or cream blush, but I wanted to have the powder to be able to set over top of it. And so, but I just, I don't know why. I couldn't get my, it was in my cart in the Sephora sale and I didn't check out with it. Why I made that life choice, I don't know. Um, but it forced me to get a little bit creative. So every time I've been like grocery shopping or something, I just walk through the cosmetic section and look for a blush palette that's giving the same kind of energy. And I hadn't been in an Ulta for a while. And so tonight I was like, Ooh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna peek and see what I can find there. Sure enough, I'm telling you, we'll see how it applies. I'll try to use it tomorrow. I'll try to remember, um, but this might be a dupe. I'll have to put the other product up next to it in the video, 
Um, these are both powder. I think the, the other product is a cream and a powder. These are both powder, but I mean, should we just put a little bit on? I feel like, I feel like we should. I'm about to wash all my makeup off anyway, so fuck it. Whoa. I'm like intimidated. <laughs> oh. Also, my makeup is like 4,000 hours old at this point. So. And this is for like a loose powder. So I'm really not doing this product like a ton of favors. Okay, that was intense. I started like bloom right there, which it's definitely, I'd, I think with a, the correct brush, we wouldn't quite have that problem. But oh my God, okay. Oh my God, the color payoff is flipping unreal. I really like tip tap tapped it. Okay. <laughs> On the little camera screen, this looks absolutely like it's giving clown. Um, but now, actually, I'm really glad I tried this so that tomorrow, once I've actually done and I have like a fresh face of makeup, I'm not like, bam. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I am thoroughly impressed. I would think like a tap of each and you would have like the most perfect powder to go over your cream blush or, or alone of course but i'm shook and this was 18 dollars. i'm pretty sure that's like half the price of the other one okay well that was super fun <laughs> i thought i'd take you through my evening routine i do the same thing every single day so, I always take off my mascara first with some micellar water and just a little flat cotton pad because I don't like to get the other products all up in my eyeball. And obviously, like, this stuff just takes off mascara so flipping easily. And since I can control and make this like very, very damp, there's no pulling like with a makeup wipe or at least like as little pulling as humanly possible because it's, there's so much fluid. I was always my biggest pet peeve with makeup wipes. It was like trying to get my mascara off and just feeling like I need more. They just are a little dry. Okay, once the eyes are cleaned up, then I go in with my LMS Pro Cleansing Balm. I like the rose one, it smells so nice, but I, I enjoy rose scented things, so. If you aren't super into that, I would use the original because the rose scent is not subtle, but you just rub it onto a dry face, which is why you have to give yourself plenty of product. And you just massage, massage, massage. Oh, you know what else I'm gonna do? I'm gonna run and grab my exfoliant too. Do that tonight since I know I'm gonna put tan on. Okay, once you've really just like melted everything away, get your hands wet, emulsify it, 
and then it starts to feel a little bit more like a traditional cleanser. And then we're gonna rinse. So you can just rinse it directly off just using water, but I actually like to use a towel. This is actually from them. It comes with the product when you buy it. I'm just being a little bit gentle, but you know. Let's be real, I'm not gonna be the most gentle. Always have to really get in there around my hairline and make sure I got these bruises out here. <laughs> Those creep me out. Okay, I'm gonna go grab my exfoliant. Okay, the exfoliant that I have been on lately is Yonka and it's their Guarana scrub. I don't know if I'm saying it correctly. Okay, while we're here, I was just going to mention that if you... Nobody come for me, I'm going to use the same cloth. <laughs> but if you are a facial girly and you have never had a hydra facial just while i was thinking about skincare um it is a must give it a try it's not the most relaxing treatment so if you're going for like a spa um i don't know kind of like the difference between getting a normal massage or a deep tissue massage a hydra facial is like a deep tissue massage except for not obviously, um, but like the lights are usually on for a lot of it and that sort of thing. So it's not like the most relaxing, but oh my God, if I could get one like every other week without one, it, I'm sure you can't, you aren't supposed to get them that often, but two without breaking the bank. Oh my God, would I do it? Nothing makes my skin feel as good as it does after a hydrofacial. Get a dermaplane first and that everything that they do during the hydrofacial just soaks in so much better. I mean, if you aren't getting a dermaplane with your facial anyways, like what are you doing? You got to, got to. My all time ride or die favorite toner. A girlfriend showed me this years ago and like I will never stray. This is also by Yonka and this is their dry skin toner. I mean, this is like, if I'm having a bad day, I may as well just come upstairs and like give myself a mist, really breathe in. It's a botanical brand, so the smells are so, I mean, it's like walking through a botanical garden, but not in like a gross cosmetic-y way, in like a Eden's garden light mist of fragrance oh god nothing beats it oh my god if i could just live in that like one to two seconds if i could click pause and just like really live there for a little bit better believe that i would so I'm gonna let that dry and just kind of settle in for a second and then move on to my couple extra steps and then we're done and out of here. Okay, I'm gonna go in with my second ride or die product and that is the SkinCeuticals Blemish and Age Defense. This stuff, I won't run out of this stuff. Like I, I won't allow it in this household. When you first start using it, you have to use it a little bit more like a, or at least people with more sensitive skin have to use it a little bit more like a spot treatment. But then eventually, like I don't, it doesn't even, I don't notice it at all when I put it on. And I haven't in years at this point. Like it doesn't hurt. It's not, there's no like alcohol burning feeling to it at all or anything like that. 
but I use it to help control acne. And I use it morning and night, every single day without fail. And then I kind of go through phases with this one, but I definitely love it. Um, the SkinCeuticals Hydrating B5 Gel. So it's just like what it said it is. Put that on everything. That stuff always soaks right in. It takes no time. <laughs> Got a little something something popping up here. I used to never wear makeup. Like I just would wear it like once, maybe twice a week. And my skin was like flawless. And for probably the last month, I've been wearing makeup almost every day. And I just think it's impossible to keep your skin perfectly clear if it's got product sitting on it for eight to 10 hours, at least every single day. I think sometimes we have to just be reminded of that because <laughs> it's easy to get very critical of ourselves and our skin. Um, but if you can take breaks without makeup, that's like my secret. <laughs> that's what has kept my skin nice for a very, very long time. And anytime I enter into this like consistent makeup wearing, something is bound to pop up, you know? The First Aid Beauty Ultra Repair Cream for moisturizer. This stuff is amazing. The first time I used it, I was so excited about it because I love the price point. And I also just love the size of the tub. Um, my skin is so dry, these like small ass but very expensive moisturizers just don't do it for me. I blow through them way too fast. But the very first time I used this, I was really excited about it. And it burned. Oh my God, it burned like a mug. So then I was terrified of it. I was like, what the fuck did I just put on my skin? And that's happened to me one other time randomly. But I mean, it did, the second time it happened, it went away pretty quick. Um, but otherwise I use this every single day, day and night and absolutely love it. I have pretty freaking sensitive and reactive skin though. So I don't know. I don't know what that means, but I think 99% of the time I've never had any issues with it. So, and who knows, maybe the times that happened, any product was going to do that to me. Like maybe my skin was just riled up about something. I don't know. Definitely spooked me the first time, but I'm glad I gave it a second chance because I mean, as you can see, like half this tub is gone. Also, I'll use it on any inch of my body. I actually like to use it to help prep the dry spots anywhere on my body before I do my fake tan. And then tonight, I'm gonna go in with a retinol. This is the SkinCeuticals 0.5. I'm trying to be better about consistently using a retinol. But my biggest complaint about it was that it, I felt like it just really dried my skin out and my esthetician told me that it's okay to pancake it in between two moisturizers. So how I do it now is I apply the retinol or I apply all my products, my moisturizer, the retinol, and then I go back in with castor oil and that seems to do the trick so castor oil this one's just from Amazon it's super cheap like 15 bucks maybe but it's the Kate Blanc Kate Blanc cosmetics certified organic castor oil don't come for me I mean maybe subtly tell me why this isn't a good idea if you know something that I don't but so far I haven't had any consequences <laughs> and I've I just keep hearing about how castor oil is like this magic product, so I just go for it. I also put castor oil, I mix it into lotion if anywhere on my body feels very dry. Um, I give myself like a oil scalp treatment with it on hair washing days.
you do just have to be very careful to not get anywhere near your little eyeballs. A couple of times I've put it on my lashes and like gotten a little bit too far down on my lash. You can like feather it across the tips and you'll be okay, but it's not comfy if it gets in your eyeballs. And obviously oils have a level of viscosity to it, so it's going to keep absorbing. You know, it's going to keep sinking down the lashes or like up the skin around your eye, that sort of thing. Okay, I've been Miss Chatty Cathy tonight. This is where we part ways. Can't wait to try that Juvia's Place palette in the morning with a fresh face of makeup, not one that has been beaten. <laughs> yeah. I'll see you tomorrow.